episode of I Demand a Homestead. My name is Amanda and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing our first um, of three videos on how to make kombucha. Um, if you have never heard of kombucha, basically what it is is it is a fermented tea. Um, so it's, it's a little bit sour and a little bit sweet at the same time and then you can add kind of whatever flavors you like to it. Um, the reason why kombucha is so popular is because it has the same probiotic bacteria that things like uh, yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, all of those kind of healthy foods that you've heard about, the kombucha has the same um, bacteria in there. So that's why it's really, really popular because it's really, really good for your gut. Um, however, it's also very expensive. So it can be a lot cheaper if you are able to make your own and it's actually really really easy and then you can make whatever flavors you like uh, and you can make flavors that you just can't get anywhere else so and you can customize it to make it as sour as you like as sweet as you like as fermented and carbonated as you like um, so you have lots of different options so the things that you're going to need to get started first of all you need something called a scoby uh, maybe what i'll do is i'll come a little closer so you can see what this guy looks like so a SCOBY is basically, um, it's, it's an, an acronym for a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So this is the SCOBY kind of sitting in a little bit of the kombucha fluid. Um, and that's what we use to kind of make our own, our first kombucha. So um, you, can, you can buy these, um, either you can get them kind of off Kijiji or other people will sell them. Um, I didn't have much luck with that. I tried it once, but then my, my kombucha ended up growing mold uh, because you really have to be very careful to make sure your SCOBY has not been contaminated by anything. Um, so then I, then I went and, and bought it from an online um, kombucha company. And since then I've had really, really good luck. All right, so you can choose to kind of go the less expensive route and, and see if someone will give you one or see if you're gonna buy it from someone informally online. Um, but you also may want the safer route in getting one from an actual company. So when you're handling your SCOBY, it's very important that your hands are clean because you don't want anything to contaminate, which is also why this container has got um, a piece of cloth on it um, that's covering it so that that way um, air can get in, but dust and flies and things can't. So if I take that off, I can reach in here and pull out this thing Ooh, which feels kind of like a gelatinous pancake. And that's pretty much what it looks like, okay? It's not the most attractive thing you have ever seen, and it doesn't feel awesome either, but it will make something super cool. And when you get your first SCOBY, it will probably be a lot thinner than this one, because they do get thicker as they age. And then what you can actually do is you can pull them apart and turn one SCOBY into two SCOBYs, um, which is what I actually did. So now I usually make two batches at once. Um, and then again, you can, you can give the extra SCOBY away, whatever you want to do with them. Um, there's other ways you can kind of keep them in your fridge in something called the SCOBY Hotel. I've never really gotten that far yet. Um, but anyway, so once you have your SCOBY, you need a jar or some kind of container for it to ferment in. This one's perfect. It's about a gallon, it's a glass jar. So you want something that's not gonna react. So um, glass is good, food grade plastic would be fine too. Um, you just don't want anything metal because the, the acid from the fermentation can react with the metal and that's not what we're after. So we've got whatever container you want. This one is about, as I said, a gallon. So we've got that. We've got our SCOBY in the liquid. Now this SCOBY, was raised using black tea. Um, it's, that's what it's no, normally used to fermenting, and so that's, you have to give it the same thing that it has been raised on, um, otherwise it just doesn't ferment very well. So if you wanna do one that was green tea, you can, but you have to get a special SCOBY for that. You can also get one that was raised um, using honey instead of sugar, but again, you have to get the special kind of SCOBY that that was raised that way. So this one was raised using black tea, so that's what we're gonna use. And then also just plain old granulated white sugar. Can't see that too well because the sun's coming in here, but anyway. So what we're gonna do to start with is we first of all 
need to prepare some sterilized water, boiling water, that we're then going to add sugar to, and then tea, and then that's what we're going to pour into that jar there, and it's going to form the, the new mixture that it's going to ferment. So what I'm going to start with first is we're just going to get a liter of water. Very exciting as I'm pouring water into my container here. And everything needs to be really sterile and clean, otherwise um, you can end up growing mold. And if you see any mold on top of your kombucha brew, you have to throw it out, you have to throw out your scoby, and you have to start again. So it really is a good idea to try and keep things as clean as possible and as sterile as possible. So we've got this, we're going to put it onto the stove um, and bring it to a boil and then I'll show you what's next. So now our um, one liter of water is boiling in here. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then what we're gonna do, so again, this is um, the right amount to make four liters of kombucha, or about um, seven or eight of these 500 milliliter brown bottles. Um, so this is one thing I didn't mention at the beginning that you will need um, before you uh, get going making your own kombucha, some kind of bottle to put it in. Um, so this one, these ones are nice because you can reuse them. You can use probably any kind of glass or plastic bottle. Um, the only difference is, is that you need to kind of, because it will be fermenting in the bottle as well, um, you need to be able to kind of release the pressure. Um, and these are nice because you can just kind of pop the lids, lets the pressure off, and then you can reseal it. But something you'll, you'll want something to kind of put that in. So this is um, 500 mils or about two cups. And so this recipe will make about probably about, yeah, I'm going to say six or seven of these because you do, you do tend to lose a little bit in the transferring back and forth process. So what we're going to do now is we want to add our tea. So we're going to add about seven of these individual tea bags into our boiling water. Four, five, six, seven. All right. And then we're going to let it steep in here with the lid on. So because this water has boiled, it's going to be basically pasteurized. It won't be sterile, but it's pasteurized. So we're putting the lid on. We've got the tea in there. So this is all still nice and clean. So we're going to let this steep for somewhere between um, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how strong you like your tea flavor in your kombucha. And then once we've done that, I'll come back and show you the next step. So now we have let our um, hot water and tea bag steep for about 45 minutes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid off and then I'm going to pull out those tea bags. I'm just going to give them a little squish and I'm just going to put them into my composter. Sure, we got them all. All of them and now again what we're going to do for our batch that is going to be um, about four three to four liters we're going to add a cup of sugar and that's going to give our scoby the fuel that it needs all right let me just see here okay we're going to put that in there and then i'm going to give it a stir And then you're going to leave this for the sugar to dissolve completely. So probably, let's say maybe like another 10 or 15 minutes with the lid on. Because again, we want to keep this as clean and as sterile as possible. All right. So I'm going to put the lid back on. And we'll come back to it in another 10 or 15 minutes. Now our sugar has been 
dissolving in our tea for at least 15 minutes and it's completely dissolved. I don't feel any kind of grains at all. So that's what we want. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water to it to make up the rest. So what you want for your water is you want something that doesn't have any chlorine in it because the chlorine will actually inhibit the fermentation from happening. So you have a few different options. Um, we're on a well, so our water is naturally not chlorinated, so we just kind of put it right from the tap in here. Uh, so you could use either filtered uh, distilled water if you wanted to. Um, the other thing you could do is you could leave your, um, you could leave like a pitcher or a pot of water out um, that is uncovered, but maybe with like a cloth over top of it because then the, the, the chlorine will then um, disperse into the air. And then within about 48 hours, you'll have water that doesn't have chlorine in it. And that way your fermentation will be able to proceed. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put um, about three liters worth of water in here to make our gallon. So we have added our um, three liters of cool, I should have said that cool water because you want to use that cool water to cool down the, the, the water that was boiling so that that way it's at room temperature. Um, you can kind of just stick your clean finger in there just to make sure that that's at room temperature because you don't want it too hot or it will kill your SCOBY. So at this point, we're ready to put our, um, our sweetened tea that is in this pot into the jar with our SCOBY. Now, if you, um, this one's already started and I know it's clean because I, I never kind of take it out. I just use the same one over and over again. If you are starting brand new, what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that your jar is um, sterilized. The way you can do that is you can um, put it in, I think there's probably resources online and I'll look this up um, exactly how long you need to kind of put it inside the oven and at a certain temperature. Just make sure that you're using a, um, a jar that is able to go into the oven. Um, the other thing that I have done to sterilize is I've put things into the dishwasher. Um, that won't be completely sterile, but it will, it will be at least kind of pasteurized and clean. Um, the other thing that what we normally do is we, uh, we make wine and so we have uh, a cleaning agent that we use that's for sterilization of our wine brewing vessels. Um, and so we just use that according to the directions, but you have a few different options. You can use your oven, um, you can run it through the dishwasher, you can go out and buy some of that sterilizing agent stuff. Um, you may even be able to buy it where you buy your SCOBY. So that's um, what you're gonna need to make sure that your, your container is going to be sterile or, or very, very clean before you put your SCOBY in there with its liquid that it will come with, because that's the, the starter brew. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour my tea in there. Okay, trying not to spill, which I usually do. You might have a little bit extra. This isn't quite a gallon. It's pretty close though. So that's as much. I want to make sure I leave a little bit of air at the top. Okay. And I'm just going to clean my hands real quick and make sure yeah, my scoby's in the perfect spot. Excellent. I'm going to flip this back over. So this is the surface that's always in contact with the scoby. So again, very careful to make sure you don't contaminate it. And then I just put a little elastic on there. And again, that's to keep the flies out um, because you want to make sure that oxygen can get to your SCOBY to allow it to ferment because it needs that. Uh, but you want to make sure that dust and flies um, and things like that don't get in there. And so what I'll now do is I'll put this someplace warm. Um, it's winter time here, so I'll probably put it near the floor vents uh, because that's where the warm air comes up from the furnace. So, and in about seven to 14 days, this will be ready to um, add some flavorings to if we want to, and I'll have another video about that as well. So what I would say um, is probably, depending on the temperature of your house, start checking it at the seven day mark and see if it's the right amount of sour for you. If you want it a little bit more sour, you can leave it to that 14 days. 
I found that if it's really cold, sometimes it takes even longer than 14 days. So just kind of keep an eye on it. And when you feel like it's sour enough for you, then you can go to the next step, which is the adding the flavorings and then the, what they call the secondary fermentation, um, which is where you can add some carbonation to it um, once it's in the bottles. But we'll talk about that on another episode. So thank you very much for joining me on another episode of I Demand a Homestead. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to press the subscribe button. And if you'd like to receive notifications when I get a new um, video up, please just press the little kind of bell symbol thing, and then you'll always know when I've got something up there. All right, have a great day and goodbye.